Hello, welcome back to the Oberheim OBXA tutorial. Today I want to have a look at, at a couple of pages inside this little settings window with the cog. The first one very quickly because this is super common on most VSTs. Hopefully you've seen this kind of stuff before. This is how we map physical controllers to our VSTs. So as soon as you enter the MIDI page, everything turns red and purple. Red means this control already has a MIDI um, channel assigned to it, control change value. So if I click, if I single click on the filter frequency, you might just be able to see this number one here is highlighted. That's what tells you that this is the current option. 74 is the control change value and it's mapped to filter frequency. Here's the resonance sat next to it and that's at 71. The purple controls aren't currently assigned and so if I click on one of these, we get it at the bottom with a couple of dashes. And this is basically now waiting for me to move something on my keyboard and associate with that control. So I'll move controller number one, and there we are. That's uh, CC22. Hop over to the decay button. Filter decay is now highlighted, knob number two. And that's as simple as it gets come out of the page by clicking literally anywhere else in the synth. Now move knob number one, and there you can see the envelope attack moving, and here's knob number two controlling the decay. I just head back into the page very briefly, right click on any assigned control, immediately unassigns it, and then I left click on it again in order to reset it. Really straightforward stuff. That's not particularly exciting, the page next to it though is pretty interesting. This is what I want to spend the majority of today talking about. Okay, so what's a macro? Well, a macro in Archuria terms is one of these four things at the bottom right hand corner of the interface and they're called brightness, timbre, time and movement and there's nothing we can do about the names but they don't have to have anything to do with those titles because we have the ability to edit these macros to make them do whatever we want. So it's really odd that you can't change the name. In brightness, for instance, you can see that it's currently mapped to filter frequency. So if I press a key on the keyboard and move this little control um, next to the brightness, you can see the filter frequency changing um, correspondingly. I can also do exactly the same from the control up in the uh, macro interface. So these two controls are identical. Whichever option I currently have selected, you can see the timbre selection below changing. And there's the resonance spiking. Back to brightness for a moment. So at the moment it's mapped to filter frequency, but we can add any number of macros we want. If I add destination, and I'm going to add oscillator 2's frequency to it and just bring oscillator 2 in and take oscillator 1 out and you'll see why shortly. Now when I move this knob, watch what happens and listen to what happens to the oscillator frequency. Okay, nothing at all, nothing at all over here. Until we, and there we go. And then down at the bottom, nothing again. So why is some part of this range not having any effect on the oscillator. It's because each of the macro controls has its own little mini function. This is just like in the advanced modulation page, we had the little um, modulation graph where we were able to create um, up to 16 nodes. You've got exactly the same functionality over here. But this is where things can start to go tricky. And at any moment, this um, demonstration might fall flat on its face because the, there are bugs in this thing. Let's deal with the happy path first. Let's keep it kind of nice and simple and listen to... You hear it get brighter with the filter frequency and messing around with the pitch via the frequency modulation. And you can see both controls in the interface updating perfectly happily. In order to show you how to break it, I'm going to get rid of the filter frequency. I just right clicked on the filter frequency, little delete pops up, click it and it's gone. 
So we're just dealing with frequency now. And then I'm going to right click on all these middle nodes to get rid of them. Nice, easy, simple graph. I'm going to bring my frequency control back down to zero. And I'm going to change, I'm going to turn my brightness down to zero as well. So everything is at its initial state. That's my simple tone. Now I'm going to increase the frequency knob to 12 o'clock, more or less. Doesn't Don't really care, close enough. Then I'm going to move this node and then pull the frequency back down again. Now a couple of things. Firstly, the maximum value has just changed to zero. This is stating the upper and lower limits of the modulation range of this um, particular macro control. So when we're talking about oscillator 2 frequency, because my frequency knob is down at zero and this is flatlining, the plugins decided that I have no minimum and maximum range. This is where it tries to get a little bit too clever. If I move this function node back down to zero and set my maximum to one arbitrarily, you can see that visually we're back to where we started. Frequency knob at zero, graph nice and linear, zero to one. Everything is exactly as it was when we started the demonstration. Now if I press a note on the keyboard, I get no pitch modulation at all until all the way over here. So there's, there's some sort of bug in the interface where there are too many relative offsets and at some point it all breaks and falls apart and then you're very sad. So just be aware that it's kind of take this stuff in baby steps. The functionality is great. And if you use it relatively straightforwardly, you know, without stressing too many of these limits, I've not put the probably what would be hours of effort in to actually figure out the precise conditions under which the bugs occur, but they're kind of manifold. It's reasonably easy to make it do like fairly crazy things. I had one the other day where it was basically drawing backwards on itself. This um, graphical interface was basically going forwards and then backwards and doing all sorts of, you know, crazy tapestry effects. So they are, it's like, you just need to kind of be careful. For the most part, it does work. And then eventually when it fails, you're just left with a, a broken macro control and you need to throw it away and come back again. So yeah, over this whole range, I've just got nothing at all. There's no pitch changes at all. If we just return to Happy Path for a moment and plug that back in. So we've lost all of that nastiness now and we're back to a simple functional macro. What these minimum and maximums are supposed to do is allow us to set a range over which the control is allowed to operate. So if we have a small range, it doesn't matter where I set this knob. You can see those two values now moving in tandem. So they're trying to maintain a window around which that operating range will work. And all of this is absolutely fine and this works. So if I just stop there, press a note, whatever that note is, It's moving smoothly over the entire range. This is why I chose oscillator two because we have a, a final level of granularity. Make the range slightly bigger and works perfectly well. I'm pretty sure it doesn't like this first node being moved. That tends to break things more often than not. So you saw when I moved it from um, whatever it was, 0.1 ever, up to one, 
the the knob kind of flew around and then jumped back on itself. You know, go back in the video and see it because I, I never know at any given time what craziness you're going to see. So you have to kind of catch yourself. But um, that's an example of clearly there are offsets here that just don't quite work, which is a great shame because when it does work, it's enormously cool. So anyway, pick the bones out of that and make of it what you will. It's potentially great functionality, just be very careful. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please do consider subscribing, hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.